the breaking news, and uh, my goodness, I was going to start with the Billikens, but the breaking news in uh, St. Louis right now is that Matt Holiday, who had signed on to be the team's bench coach after Skip Schumacher departed to the Miami Marlins for the managerial position, has decided to resign over, um, I think, concerns of spending too much time away from his family. And the immediate uh, fill-in and new hire is Joe McEwing, who had been on the White Sox staff for several seasons, including the bench coach under Rick Renteria. The, there's several things there. First of all, um, I think your speculation about Matt's reasoning is probably pretty close. You hope it's nothing serious, but just a change of heart and realizing that he'd be away from the family and all the hours and all those kinds of things. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't blame a guy for that. Got into it, so you know, if that's the case. The other thing is the an immediate pivot to Joe McEwing, who is absolutely tremendous and who has experience. Thing about Matt, you know, he helped coach in college and that sort of thing. It was gonna be a new experience for Holiday. And I don't think anybody doubted that he was gonna be very good at it. But McEwing has experience. We know he's good at uh, being on a staff. Um, I was lucky enough to get to know Joe a little bit, not like we talked, I haven't talked in years, quite frankly. But when he came up in 99, I was still doing games. So I'm in the clubhouse all the time. Terrific guy. Uh, La Russa and the whole staff, the whole team loved him because of the work ethic, the intensity. You know, it, it, if you play for Tony La Russa and you're intense, he loves you. Um, and uh, Joe did everything he could to make himself a valuable asset to the club, and he was very successful. Um, had a chance to, in the back in those days, uh, meet and talk to his family. Great family, no surprise. I just think it's a, a real win for the Cardinals. I'm with you. I think it's a natural fit. This is a man who has uh, uh, had several interviews for different managerial positions, including maybe even in St. Louis. Certainly a guy that they had on their radar. If, yeah. the, if the news broke you know, this quickly and he was their fallback option this fast, uh, I think you know, clearly there had been some discussion at some point with Joe McEwing. He's 50 years old. He is a native of Philadelphia. But he spent 15 years in the White Sox organization coaching, which is almost hard to believe because it almost feels like 15 years ago he was He's wearing playing. a uniform I know. for the Cardinals. But he broke in with the Cards in 1998. He spent two seasons before they dealt him to the New York Mets. And uh, his nickname for those who were around at the time, it's always kind of stuck with me, as Little Mac mm -hmm. because Big, M Big Mac, of course, was on the team doing his thing for the Cardinals then. But uh, it's exciting. I mean, look, just – to be, this is my opinion, but, you know, Matt Holliday is a frequent guest on Hot Take Central on Mondays, and um, even going back to before he announced or the team announced that he was going to be joining the staff, it had always been rumored that he might have a future role with the team, and even he alluded to, I believe I played the clip before, of him saying, well, look, I've still got Three young kids. We just shipped one off to Baltimore, who's only 19, by the way. Right. Uh, Jackson. He's got one other boy who's soon to be probably a first-round pick, very high pick in the MLB draft. And he's got two really young kids that are still there, and he wasn't going to move the family from Stillwater. They were going to stay there. He was going to you know, get back as much as he could. But his main focus, of course, here in St. Louis, and uh, as we were just discussing before we came live on the air – it's a really hard job to not completely invest yourself into. If you have any qualms whatsoever or you think you're getting wet feet because you don't want to be away from your family, which is a totally legitimate you know, reason, then it's hard to be completely invested into the organization. I'm not down there like I used to be years ago, but I bet I'm not too far off in suggesting on a, on a given game day, a 7 p.m. start, the coach is there at 10 in the morning probably earlier, uh, and they're there till well after the game, probably even midnight, and that's what you're doing every day. I'm not, I'm not whining for them or saying they're victims. It's a job they take, and um, they're in the big leagues, and it's what they want to do. I'm just saying it is a grind, and it can take a toll. So if, if those are some of the reasons that Matt decided to resign, I get it. Um, 
And anybody who's a family man, not a shot to you two guys. You'll probably get there someday. Eh. Um, Cole will. I will. Yeah, it's <laughs> making that. <laughs> Take it or leave it. You know, at what point? At what point do you? You know, do you say you start sacrificing? for your career and you say, well, it's a great career and I can take care of my family, but is it as valuable as the time lost? And that's, that's a hard decision for every family to make. And uh, <clears throat> again, if that's his reasoning, I respect it completely. I think it was a unique situation where it was a organization that he knows extremely well. It's a friend in Oliver Marmel and it's a bench coach job, which, oh, by the way, the last four to hold that position have become major league managers. Mm-hmm. So it was definitely a, a path for Matt Holiday to kind of rise to the top immediately without having to go through some of the grunt work. Now, that might draw, draw the ire of some uh, really good coaches in the minor leagues, right, who have fought tooth and nail and ridden a lot of bus miles to try to yep. put themselves in a position to even get an interview but the reality is is that it is a changing game when it comes to to who baseball executives are putting in the dugout and it was just a the, the the red carpet was rolled out for Matt Holiday and as awesome as it would have been to have him in St. Louis I don't think the door is necessarily closed on that ever happening I think a little bit down the road you maybe his think kids so. get older if the Cardinals think as highly of of Matt as they do clearly and this position opens up in five to eight years, well, who's to think that Matt Holiday couldn't uh, be considered for that position at that point? But I, I, there was another telling moment of when he was asked, you know, your buddy Skip Schumacher is going to be the manager of the Marlins. He doesn't have anybody on his staff. How about going to be the hitting coach? Jimmy the Cat Hayes asked him that, and he laughed. I mean, it was almost insulting that he would be considered for that job. Like, no, I would never do that. I get to do something, A, that I love here, which is be around my family. But also, he gets to coach with Oklahoma State. He gets to be around the environment, those young guys, and still teach the game. And I think that's probably something that alleviates some of the pressure to get to the big leagues right now. You know, and what it, this is something I can only speculate about, and that is when you're rich – but you still want to work. Where do you draw the line on what you feel like you need to do? And here's where I'm going with that. Mm-hmm. He obviously loves Oklahoma State and Stillwater, right? It, he loves it. Maybe he's a guy that follows his kids around in their careers as they move forward. And is that, I don't know if Oklahoma State pays him or not. Um, but he can stay around the game at a very high level, a very high level at Oklahoma State. And uh, does he someday maybe just stay at that level and enjoy life and be able be more able to set his own schedules and that sort of thing? He's been in the big leagues. He's won in the big leagues. He's made millions. The grind and the pressure on coaching staffs um, – is it can be immense, and it's so at some point, guys like that, you want you, as they go through it, you wonder it. They, they got to think, what the heck am I doing? Even though I love the job itself, so for him perhaps to have seen that before he jumped in with both feet, I think is probably pretty good. Don't you think that it's probably there's more pressure on an individual once they jump into the coaching pool as opposed to when they were a player? I mean, maybe I would just think there's there's so much more on your plate. I think there's more to do. Yeah, and you can't necessarily impact the outcome as much because you're reliant on individuals to go put in the work or go do things that you're trying to teach them. Like at least if it was your own ability, you could do everything possible to make yourself better. When you're the coach, I, I would just think that that's almost. That's a tough spot. Coaching is really hard, and that's why I give ultimate respect to the best ones because they do get more out of their players than others. And they do, and they love it. We talk about, my gosh, the workload and the pressure, but they love it. And I agree with you. Tip your cap, and and the ones that are really good at it, um, uh, they deserve the respect. And uh, it's, it's, it's a great business, but it will take its toll. You want to hear, this is like a little snippet of uh, how, how 
perhaps immature our little fun show in the morning is. I listen every morning. Yeah. I don't need any other evidence, you know? but I think it'd be great for our <laughs> listeners who don't happen to listen in the morning. So this is our group text line, and I'll just so we get a text here. Holiday pulled out his bench coach. Said he got clo- as he got closer to spring training, the more he realized he didn't want to miss out on being around what his kids are doing. And, of course, the very next text, which I'll leave it up to your own minds to determine who said this, never good to pull out. Okay. Hmm. Isn't that something? I can't believe you texted that. <laughs> that was not me. Not a safe strategy. Why would Cam do that? It wasn't it. You know what? Not Cam. Oh. <laughs> Cam's, Cam's currently Googling to figure out who Matt Holiday is. <laughs> okay. That's where we're at with that. Conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's just a little resume on uh, McEwing. He coached at Winston. Uh, he was the head manager at Winston Salem. That's the um, Single A affiliate of the White Sox in the Atlantic League. He was the manager of the year there in both of his first two seasons. Isn't that great? Then he managed at Charlotte, which I've heard is a spectacular place, beautiful ballpark, and kind of a cool city. Pretty a larger city for the minor leagues and maybe some others. Uh, and then he was the manager in the Arizona Fall League with the Mesa Solar Sox before he was promoted to the big league coaching staff. He coached third base initially. Then when Rick Renteria was named the manager, he was the bench coach from 17 to 20 and then back to third base coach the last two seasons. The only uh, maybe clear conclusion I would come to from this is the fact that I don't think Lance Lynn will ever be a Cardinal as long as Joe McEwing is on the staff. <laughs> do you remember the incident? No, no I do not. Oh, I, I certainly don't. Do you, Rammer? No. Last year, and this is, I'm completely BSing. Who knows? No, Lance Lynn probably doesn't think anything of it. But the two did get into it in the dugout and uh, shared words. And then, remember, Lance Lynn was asked about it in the post game, and they said, what were you and McEwing discussing? And he goes, uh, the best steakhouse in Chicago. <laughs> That's a good line. Yeah, just having fun. But Joe McEwing uh, hired as the bench coach after Matt Holiday resigns uh, official per the Cardinals. Uh, John Mozalek is slated to uh, speak to the media this week and I believe on Saturday. Of course, the winter warm-up gets underway um, this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday down at Ballpark Village. So uh, uh, an intriguing uh, – an intriguing changeup yeah, here in the last hour. Everybody's surprised. Yeah. Everybody in the market surprised. No doubt. But it is so nice to have an organization that clearly the position is so highly coveted that you probably didn't have to go very far down your list of names to go, that's the other guy we wanted. Let's hey, Joe, it's in. Mo. Exactly. Bench coach? Yeah, send me a ticket. I'm coming. And folks might remember, too, the Cardinals offered the position to Matt Holiday last year before they ultimately gave it to Skip Schumacher. Mm-hmm. So it's not like if you miss out on your top candidate, you're gonna your fallback option is not gonna be solid. I think McEwing's gonna be uh, really nice to have. And what I've noticed about the the coaching staff, just observing, is that the camaraderie that they have and the openness to share opinions without necessarily rubbing somebody the wrong way, which does happen on in certain it can, coaching, yeah, mm-hmm. you know situations it seems like it's a very healthy room where we're if if you have a difference of opinion you're not going to be like ostracized so to speak doesn't seem I have I have no uh no insight to that just lie Uh, I have no insight to that but when you can achieve that kind of chemistry it makes everything just work smoothly and I think that's why over the last couple of years whether the Cardinals want to acknowledge or will say that it even existed when you had conflicts with the manager and members of the staff in uniform and out of uniform, um, hitting coach and assistant hitting coach, those kind of things, when they clash, that becomes a real problem. Yeah. You don't want to air your uh, dirty laundry necessarily. Well, even if you don't air it and nobody knows about it, but it exists, it's not a good working environment and it has to hamper the ultimate goal. Even if it's only a little, it does. Is there any shock that Stubby – like, where does Stubby Clap fall into all this? I'm just, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud here because this is a guy who has been interviewed for managerial I positions. I wish he'd be coaching third. Over at third to save 
Or, save uh, lives. Save lives. <laughs> what do you call uh, Dr. Kevorkian? Dr. Kevorkian over at third base. Yeah, I wish. I really wish he'd get a shot. I, he to me, he seems like the quintessential old school third base coach, a baseball lifer who knows the game. He was an aggressive player. He gets. I, I wish he'd get a shot over there. I really do. All fascinating. I'm sure uh, we'll learn more when John Moselak speaks this weekend, and of course we'll bring Probably you some not. of that audio. Oh, you don't think so? You don't think he's gonna? Well, that decided the champion. You're not gonna get any. No. <laughs> We already know what the, we know. The tweet of the day belongs to Ben Fredrickson, who said that Matt Holiday lasted longer than Bobby Petrino did at UNLV. I saw that. Which I found funny because he took the offensive coordinator job at uh, where, Texas uh, A&M. Uh, I think I, Texas A&M under yes. Jimbo Fisher. A few, months, yes. a few months from now. When the morning show gets Holiday on, then you'll probably start to get more of the real story when he's relaxed and comfortable. And maybe not even a few months, maybe right away the next time you get him on, they'll say, you know, whatever he's going to say, but it'll be more casual and he'll tell everybody what's going on. Yeah. He's a pretty open book when you yeah. get him in a comfortable setting. He's yep. not afraid to uh, tell, tell it like it is.